Now, um, it's a disease that affects the lives of one in ten Australian women. It can cause chronic pain, bowel issues, nausea and, of course, infertility. And now the federal government's working on a national action plan for sufferers of endometriosis, while researchers work on finding new ways of treating the debilitating condition. And for those like Jessica Panetta, a cure can't come soon enough. Endometriosis for me, uh, by the age of 13, periods were extremely painful. By the age of 15, they became unmanageable. Um, I was taken to a gynaecologist with my mum. Uh, he pretty much said that I possibly did have endometriosis, didn't explain what it was, uh, just gave me the pill and said that, yep, that should sort you out and get you through the next couple of years. The symptoms can be extremely, extremely painful. I have chronic pain every single day. I have a lot of flare-ups throughout that also, but the pain can be so intense, basically I can't move. I can't do anything on my own, and I'm laying in bed with about three hot water bottles, one across my stomach, one on my, on my chest, and one sitting on my back. The first two surgeries that I had, I actually had it on my bowel and uterus. Um, that was burnt off. My third surgery, I was very lucky to find an endo-excision specialist. Uh, he removed endometriosis from my diaphragm, my abdomen wall, my flank, uh, my pouch of Douglas, bladder, bowels, basically everywhere in the pelvic area. So all up in 10 years I've had eight surgeries. Managing the pain can be extremely difficult. Um, I found out four years ago I've also got a benign liver tumour, which is obviously estrogen based, so I'm very limited to what options I can take. I tried a holistic approach. I went to see naturopaths, osteopaths, homeopaths, acupuncture, tr traditional Chinese medicine and countless diets. The only thing that had actually given me pain relief is Cineril, which is a chemically induced menopause that they use for prostate cancer. Um, I was on that for 18 months and that was the best 18 months of my life. So, but I can't do it again because I've done three times when you're only supposed to do six months worth of it. So in my last job that I had, um, my manager, I took, I had to take a couple of days off work every two to three weeks. And she basically told me that I need to get myself sorted because no one's going to employ someone that takes sicky days. And I said, I'm not taking a sick day, I'm in physical pain, I have endometriosis for her. It wasn't her issue, she needed someone to work. Um, since then, I've been total permanent disability for the past five years, so I've been unable to work. I have extreme concerns about thinking about having kids. You know, if I can't manage my pain on a daily basis and even look after myself, how can I do that with a helpless baby? I know I've got support from my parents, you know, my family and friends, but I don't know if it's a little bit of pride, but at the same time I need to have myself manageable. If I can't look after myself, I can't look after anyone else. I think that there's a little bit more awareness coming out into the public now. Um, it's nice to see sometimes if someone mentions something about endometriosis, they'll say, oh, my mum had that, or my sister, or I know a friend that had surgery for it. So there's a lot more recognition around it. It's not such a taboo subject to start off with. Personally for myself, I don't know if I'm optimistic about my future. Um, it's been a very, very difficult at least 10 years for me um, with all the surgeries that I've had, but I am optimistic and I pray to God that one day they will find a cure or at least a better treatment for endometriosis. The first-hand account of Jessica Panetta there. Extraordinary to think that such an able young woman is now on permanent disability. Well, it's actually now just the end of Endometriosis Awareness Month that was in March. So to explain more about the situation that people like Jessica find themselves in, research fellow at the Royal Women's Hospital, Dr Sarah Holdsworth Carson, joins us now. And she runs Australia's largest research project into endometriosis. Um, Sarah, good morning and good to meet you. Thank you. During Endometriosis Awareness Month, I guess you must have heard a lot of stories very similar to Jessica's. Very similar, yes. There's um, a lot of women that suffer from the condition, one in ten women of reproductive age, um, and we are hearing more and more about it because of the increased awareness around endometriosis. What is it? What is actually going on inside the body to cause such a degree of pain? So the lining of the uterus will normally shed when a woman has her period. Um, in women with endometriosis, instead of uh, a portion of the blood that sheds ends up coming into the pelvic cavity and the tissue that is a part of the womb will then form lesions on various sites, um, on the ovary, on the surface of the uterus, on ligaments, various places, and these lesions cause pain. And uh, are these the things that are known as fibroids? No, no, that's something a little bit different. These are, these are called endometriotic lesions. Okay, mm -hmm. and the, the pain is clearly um, substantial and uh, 
despite all you know, very sophisticated pain relief that we have these days, why does that not provide any relief? I think the, the issue is that the disease is quite various in its symptom onset. Some women can have extreme pain, some women can have mild pain and other women will have no pain at all. So how do you find a treatment to fit everybody when there's such various symptoms? And are repeated surgeries advisable? Um, some women find release, relief from surgery. When they perform a laparoscopy, they remove a lesion and that can help with pain relief, but it is not a cure. Um, the disease can reoccur, so you can't have a surgery every 12 months mm. when disease onset may be from a very young age. Yeah. Jessica, whom we're seeing now on the screen, had spoken about the taboo around talking about these sorts of issues. We are not really that great at talking about problems with the reproductive no, systems, we are aren't. we? Why is that? I think it's because it was considered a taboo. Women have probably been a little bit nervous about talking about their problems or the gynaecological problems. I think this is changing. Women are becoming more comfortable about talking to their friends and medical practitioners if they have symptoms that are unusual. So the voices are coming louder. It's, it's also the case that when a young woman hits puberty, there are changes in the body that you just don't know what's normal. And so part of the action is actually to target younger women in high schools That's and right. say, this is not normal, so you're not having to wait seven, 12 years for a diagnosis. That's right, yeah. So uh, if you're in so much pain and discomfort that you can't go to school, that's not normal. So we need to spread that message that what is normal um, and what is abnormal so that women seek help and advice when they need to. The trickiest thing about it, of course, is that it's oestrogen respondent. It, mm -hmm. It's a disease that's sort of fed really by the oestrogen, which has to be, you know, must be present in, in, a, in a woman's body. Is that where the research is focusing now when it comes to actually treating and possibly eliminating the disease? Part of it. Um, a lot of the treatments that are currently available for endometriosis are, revolve around suppressing your period and suppressing um, the, the effects of oestrogen. Yeah. Um, our research at the women's is specifically looking at the genetic drivers of the disease and endometriosis is there is an inheritable component to it so we're trying to understand the high risk genes and what their involvement is in the disease mechanism. Should the focus be actually on, on menstruation itself because if, if the, the blood is not leaving the body in the way that it needs to um, then that's sort of the primary cause of the problem I guess isn't it? Uh, up to 90% of women will have retrograde menstruation so it's very 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 common right. it is just that there is a certain percentage of women that go on to form lesions so we, we need to identify what is unique about these women that form lesions. As part of this national action plan, what is it that you're hoping will, will come out of it? There's $2.5 million I think the government's allocated yeah, to. I think brilliant. a lot of it's to support the research it um, is. that's going on. Yep. Uh, what can we realistically expect from the time that we've ha we have and from that amount of money? Um, all, all money for research is, is welcome. Unfortunately, we need more money so that we can have more research because if, if we need to in, un, improve our understanding of this disease to improve diagnostics and improve treatment, we need more research. Sarah, really good to meet you this morning. Good luck. With Thank all you the very much. That you do. Thank Thanks you. so much.